Hi, and welcome back. In this segment, we're going to build off the previous segment about X-ray and start actually checking out some data to get a sense of how X-ray can be useful to us. And just to recap, we're looking at this four-dimensional net CDF file with the U and V current velocities uh, in the Southern Ocean. And similar to pandas, the best way to see what's inside a net CDF file that you've loaded as an X-ray data set is to use the display function. And that pulls up this interactive view here where you can see that the file has four dimensions, oops, four dimensions, depth, lat for latitude, lawn for longitude, and time. And you can see the size of those dimensions. For instance, there are 13 depths, 12 times. Now in the coordinate section, you can see the arrays that represent each coordinate and which dimensions they go along. And then we see the variables, u and v. And this tells us that they're both four-dimensional because they use all four dimensions here. Now, I'm going to move quickly to the Colab notebook. And here I have that same screen pulled up. Uh, and we can take a peek at the values themselves by clicking the cylinder icon in this interactive section. OK. So for instance, we see the full time coordinate here. Over here, we see a portion of the latitude coordinate. And that goes from uh, 77 south to 29 south. And for longitude, we see that the longitudes go from 179 west to 180 east. In other words, a full circle around the globe. And then for the depths, we see that those go from 21 meters to 4,600 meters, which is uh, near the seafloor at about like three miles deep. And then for the, for the uh, variable u here, x-ray tells us uh, when we click on this that we are dealing with 49 million data points. And these are data type float. OK. And then we can also click these page icons to check out the attributes or metadata for a coordinate or variable. For example, we see that latitude is specified in units of, uh, oops, it's not latitude. Latitude is specified in units of degrees north. Okay. Um, so these negative latitudes here mean that we are in the southern hemisphere. And we can confirm that, uh, for instance, depth here is given in meters. And it also tells us that the depths refer to the, uh, the, the center value of each grid cell rather than like the top or the bottom. So th this is just you know, some metadata that can be useful. And for the variable u, we see that the units are meters per second and that the long name is SOMO, which means east-west component of velocity. Switch back to here. And if we want to look at a single variable inside a data set, we use brackets to retrieve that variable. And that gives us a data array because an X-ray data set object is just a collection of data arrays, the same way a pandas data frame object is just a collection of series. So here we've retrieved the U velocity variable from data by saying data brackets u. And we can do math also with x-ray objects by just adding them together or multiplying them together or adding numbers to them or multiplying them by numbers. And it works just like NumPy. Except x-ray matches the coordinates so that you'll always, for example, add the January value of one variable to the January value of another variable. It's really handy. So here we've calculated the current speed using the Pythagorean theorem, right? Because the u and v components of velocity form this triangle where the speed is the hypotenuse. We save it as a new variable, speed, and we just write data brackets u squared plus data brackets v squared all to the one half power, which is the square root. And we see here that all the dimensions, they were matched up and they were preserved. It's still four dimensional. And this is that new speed variable um, that I plotted in the 3D graphic I showed earlier. So you saw that X-ray data sets and the variables inside them, which are data arrays, uh, they each have attributes. They don't always, but uh, often they do. And we can see them uh, using that interactive interface I showed earlier, but we can also do that using code. And we access that using this attributes syntax, .attrs. And that gives us back a Python dictionary, a set of keys and values. So the attributes for the U variable in data are these dictionary keys and values, for instance, for units, meters per second. And we get the value of an attribute by specifying its key in brackets uh, like this. So 
brackets units here gives us the value meters per second. We can also change the value of an attribute by just setting it to something different. So here we say uh, the units attribute will now be set to meters per second. And here we've written that out fully without the abbreviation. And the value has changed. Okay, so one way we select data from an X-ray uh, object, a data set or data array, is by indexing using dot I cell parentheses. Now this is like your standard Python integer indexing in brackets or pandas dot I lock indexing. So you call dot I cell on the variable and then you specify a coordinate name and this one is especially different um, from, from, from what you've seen before. Um, and uh, you give a single integer index, right? You can also give a, a list or array of indices along that coordinate. And here, if you want to slice, you actually have to provide a slice object, which is a function that takes the starting index and the ending index along a coordinate. And here, the, the stop value here that's exclusive, uh, like we're used to with NumPy. So in this example, we're looking at the u variable of data. So this is a data array. And we're selecting by index, I cell, the 0th time, the 200th latitude, the 500th longitude, and the 0th depth. Just single indices. So think of this as like a NumPy array saying bracket 0, comma 200, comma 500, comma 0. And this set of addresses it points us to a single location in the data. And I've marked that over here in this map here. A time of January 2012, a latitude of 52.7 south, longitude of 13 west, and a depth of two meters. So selection gives us a new data set or data array, uh, even if the result is a single number, which is kind of weird. So we often want to convert that into just the floating point number and get, a, get rid of that X-ray structure, right? The coordinates and the attributes, everything. So we do that by calling dot item on the result. Um, or alternatively, you can wrap the indexing in Python's float function. So in this example, we call dot item uh, or we wrap the indexing in the float function. Uh, and we get back just this single floating point number, which is a U velocity of 0.12 meters per second. And that's positive, which means eastward. And just to go back to this uh, dot I cell selection by integer indices. So here we have an example uh, where we use all three options. We're selecting the single indices for time, latitude, longitude. But for depth, uh, here we're selecting the first five depths. In this case, from indices 0 to 4 uh, using a list. And in the second case, doing the same exact thing, but using a slice object from 0 to 5. And in either case, this gives us a data array where only the depths dimension remains. So it has the five values of u from a depth of two meters to 146 meters, which is what this is trying to show here. So when selection gives you multiple values, like in this case, it's still in that x-ray format. But again, we can get rid of that x-ray structure and we can pull out the underlying numpy array, in this case, using the dot value syntax that you saw in the pandas segment. And th this works too with the original X, uh, X array object. So here you selected called dot values. Here we're just calling dot values on the entire object. We get all the data as a NumPy array. Um, so in this case, you know, it's usually going to be a two dimensional or three dimensional, maybe even a four dimensional array. So in this example, we have our u variable sliced using dot I cell to get five depths. And we call dot values to convert that result from X array to a length five NumPy array over here without the coordinates, the attributes, all of that. So to get, just to recap here, to get a single number out of x-ray, we use dot item or the float function. To get multiple values, we use dot values. So we saw how to select data by integer indices um, along coordinates using dot i cell. But we can also select the coordinate values themselves using the dot cell function. So while dot i cell in x-ray is like dot i lock in pandas, dot cell in x-ray is like dot lock in pandas. And note that slicing here, unlike with dot i cell, is inclusive at the end value. OK, so in this example here, you can see that we're selecting a single time. And in this case, we have to specify that time exactly down to the hours. And same with latitude, right? We have to know exactly what latitudes are available 
in the lat coordinate. In this case, we're at exactly 52 south, 0.70605. Same with longitude and depth. And like before, this extracts the value of the U velocity at these coordinates. And now here's an example of using the slice object option. So here we're slicing from depths of two meters to 147 meters. And that pulls out those five depths we got earlier uh, using integer indexing. And notice here we can get a little more lazy with the values that we specify without knowing that the actual values are you know, 2.1 to 146.5. We just say 2 to 147 because it, slicing is inclusive on both ends. But if having to specify those exact single coordinate values seems annoying, uh, that's because it is, right? Um, you usually don't want to have to worry about knowing the exact coordinates. And in that case, you can use this really uh, handy method equals nearest option, along with approximate single coordinates. And what X-ray will do is it will find the data value that lies closest to the coordinates you specify, hence nearest. So in this example, we say we want a time around January 30th, 2012, a latitude around 53 south, a longitude around 13 west, and a depth around two meters. And we add method equals nearest at the end. And it pulls out that value at these precise coordinates here um, that were closest to these approximate values that we were looking at. Again, uh, it corresponds to this value on the map here. Okay, and just to give two more visual examples. Here, we're selecting by coordinate values. And uh, for both examples, uh, we're going to specify an exact time, 2012, January 30th, hour 20. Okay. So in this first example here, we're giving an exact depth, 2.1 meters near the surface, right? And then we're slicing in latitude and slicing in longitude. And what we get is this two-dimensional swath of surface data here. So the result has two remaining dimensions, latitude and longitude. And in this second example here, we're doing something similar. We're slicing uh, this time in depth from 200 to 1,000 meters and in longitude. Um, and at the end, we're going to stack on another selection, a, a second dot cell. Uh, in this case, using the method equals nearest option to add on an approximate single latitude, 57 south. OK. And similar to before, this gives us a two-dimensional swath. This time, it's an east-west depth section, with the remaining dimensions uh, being depth and longitude. And just like pandas, uh, we can reduce the, the data in an x-ray object or a selection um, by applying NumPy functions, such as mean. Um, and that gives us uh, the average, right? So we basically just stack the function onto the variable. Um, and when you do that for, uh, for the entire variable, it calculates it over all dimensions. So in this case, we've um, selected this 2D swath here of u velocity data. And this is exactly the same as the previous slide, but we've, st we've stuck dot mean onto the end. And then we also say dot item to get the single value out of X-ray and into NumPy. And it gives us that, um, that single value, sorry, not, not to NumPy, but just a floating point value. It gives us that, that one mean over that latitude and longitude swath um, that I've shown over here. Okay, so this is mean over all the dimensions. And just like how you can uh, specify an axis when you apply a NumPy function to a NumPy array, you can also specify a single dimension or multiple dimensions to apply these NumPy functions to an X-ray object. So here we specify dot mean dim for dimension equals lon, which is the, 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 the variable name for longitude. Okay. And that says we calculate the average across the longitude dimension, across you know, all longitudes. And that leaves only latitude as the dimension remaining. And the result, therefore, is one dimensional in latitude. And final slide here, what does that average across the longitudes of the 2D swath look like? Well, here it is. It's a 1D array, so it's just a line with latitude on the x-axis and the variable, those, those u velocities, on the y-axis. So from this, you can see that average velocities are highest towards the south in these southern latitudes, and they decrease going northwards. And if you look at the swath here, 
that indeed seems to be the case, right? The brightest colors are near the southern part of this 2D patch of the surface ocean. And the northern part here, that's a bit darker, meaning velocities are slower. OK, you can find the mat, uh, matplotlib code to make this plot in the accompanying CoLab notebook for this lesson, uh, which hopefully you've been following along using. And um, that's it. So in general, I hope you've gotten a taste for how powerful and useful X-ray can be. Um, it opens up all these options, having these coordinates and dimensions attached to the NumPy arrays um, that lets us look into them using indexing. And uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for making it through this longer lesson. And hopefully see you in class soon.